Good morning. It's my first time up here this morning. How are you guys doing? Awesome. I'm so glad you're here. It's your first time here. Welcome to God's house. I'm excited for our message this morning because we are in the middle of a series that we're doing for a, a few weeks called Whatever It Takes. And so if you're here today or you're listening online or you're watching on live stream, I just want to say welcome. And I want to invite you to look at whoever's next to you. Except for my, okay, I'm going to, you can look at me, okay? And say, I'll do whatever it takes to build the kingdom of God. Okay, now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know why I just said y'all, because I ain't from down south. But here's the thing. When you say, she's down south, when you say, I'll do whatever it takes to build the kingdom of God, Typically, whatever it takes is not something that you're just like, I guess I'll just passively do whatever it takes. So let's try one more time, all right? Look at someone and say, I'll do whatever it takes to build the kingdom of God. All right, I'll do whatever it takes to build the kingdom of God. And today we are going to talk about a way that we build the kingdom of God as a church. And so if you're here and it's your first time in church, you've been in church your whole life, I'm believing today that as we open God's word and as we talk through what Jesus is calling us to be as the church, we will get a new understanding of, of old concepts that we'll begin to understand in new ways things that God has said for centuries so that we can truly live out building the kingdom of God, building the church, and restoring the world. If you got your Bible, turn over to Luke chapter 5. We're going to talk this morning on the subject, the church is the hospital. The church is the hospital. Look over at Luke 27. Starting, or no, Luke 5, starting in verse 27, and we're going to read to verse 32. It says, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting in his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. The Pharisees and teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to the disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let's pray this morning. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for five verses, God, that can fill a message, God, because of the power in what Christ said to us. So I pray this morning that you will help us to be a church that is built on what Jesus said, God, that is a church like a hospital. I pray that you would give me the words to speak this morning so that we can truly be people who follow after you and do whatever it takes to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple weeks ago, I was driving back from Detroit and I, I go to Detroit often for the Center for Success, the other or, nonprofit organization I run. And so I travel back and forth some weeks. And I was in Detroit, and Kelsey had been up there. We were up there for her grandmother's funeral, and then she came back home. And I was getting, doing some meetings in Detroit, and then I was going to come back. And so when I left Detroit, typically it's like a three-and-a-half-hour drive back to Marion. And I had my mission, and I was going to get in my car, and I was going to get home in three-and-a-half hours. So I would be home with Kelsey and Weston before Weston went to bed. And I got on I-75 South, and if you've ever gone to Florida, you probably get on I-75 at some point. And so I got on I-75 South, and I got about 10 miles outside of Detroit, and it said, road closed. And I was like, seriously? Because I don't know that area. I'm not from South Detroit. I'm from north of Detroit. And so I, I was like lost. And so I, I called Kelsey, and I'm like, I don't know what to do because traffic's so heavy. If I get off on another highway, I don't know how long it'll take. I'm just going to follow the detour. You ever follow a detour? I don't know where I ended up, but I ended up in some town, and it was like angelic. This is not part of the, 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 what I was going to tell you, but it, I just came up, and it's really wonderful. This big, massive, angelic sign that said DQ showed up, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I can get some ammunition to get home, and so I pulled off, and I got a blizzard, and then I got back on the road, and I was driving, and I was kind of 
grumbling, I guess, to God. Like, seriously, it's going to take me five and a half hours, what usually takes three and a half hours, and we had just already been gone for a week, and it was funeral, so there was, like, emotions, and then I had some, like, stressful meetings, and I just wanted to get home. And I'm driving, and I'm kind of griping to God, and my phone rings, and someone calls me and just starts encouraging me. Like, I mean the kind of encouragement where they say something to you that you're like, I can't be that good, you know? You're like, what? You see? I, don't, I don't see what you see. I, where, where is this coming from? And I hung the phone up, and I was so encouraged. On that same trip, I got a text message from Megan Gilmore, who was at this Q Ideas conference, that I was actually going to go with her and a team, too. But I, at last, right before we bought tickets, I was like, I don't feel like I'm supposed to go, which ends up being good because we had Kelsey's grandma's funeral. Um, but she was there, and so she was texting me things people were saying as she was there. And she sent me this text with this, with this word in Greek, which will come up on the screen, which is philosenia, which means hospitality in Greek. And the meaning of this word is love for the other, the separate, or the different from. Love for the other, the separate, the different from. And when I saw that text message on that drive home, I spent the next four hours writing this message, very carefully talking into my phone, by the way. I don't text and drive, for the record, if any police are watching. Here's the thing. I I just talked into my speak text into my phone, working on this message as I drove, because as I saw that word, immediately I thought, oh my goodness, that's what the church should look like. Love for the other, the separate from. You see, I think so many times in our culture, the church becomes people who look like each other. And we start representing what looks more like a country club than a hospital. Right? You show up and you think, well, I got to wear what that person wears because that's all the people that go to my church wear that, right? Or I got to drive what that person drives because that's what everybody drives. Or I got to work on the job that person works on. And you start trying to create an atmosphere and a culture within your church where everyone looks and acts and talks the same. And then you wonder why you're not effectively building God's kingdom. Because here's the thing. The church was not designed to be a country club. The church was designed to be a hospital. Jesus says in Luke chapter 5, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. It's interesting that when you're healthy, you don't typically go to the doctor. I know sometimes you have to go for your well visits, but it's just for them to affirm that you're well. Then you go back out. But you go to the doctor when you're sick. And you go to the hospital when you need care, usually in some urgent manner, right? You show up because you have to have something in your life changed or you aren't going to make it. If you look at the church as a whole, our Sunday morning experience is kind of like the ER. Do you ever go to an ER? Anybody in the emergency room? I'm married to a nurse, so I get a lot of stories about ER. I can't share them because of HIPAA, but um, I'm just kidding. She doesn't tell me names. Um, But... We, we live across the street from the hospital. I go to the cafeteria all the time. We're, we're, in, we're hospital kind of people. That's weird, I know. But we go to the hospital a lot, and Kelsey's there all week. And so when you go into an ER, it looks a whole lot different than when you walk into a gourmet restaurant. Right? If you walk into a gourmet restaurant, everybody's walking around and they're holding their little things and they're serving you, you know, all these like things and, 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 and it's just this like special thing. When you go into an ER, it is chaotic. There might be someone over there hacking and you're like, please, I'm here for a broken arm and now I'm getting the flu. Do you mind? Stay away from me. Like they're hacking over there and this person over here just puked all over the floor and then you got a nurse over here yelling at the doctor because there's a code going on back there and someone's dying on the table so they all go run and they leave you sitting there and you're like, what about me? And they're all running after that person to save their life and it's, it's chaos everywhere. And what we do on Sunday mornings as a church should look more like that than a club. This should be a place where it is so safe for every single person to come in here as broken as you may be, from a week of hell if you had one, from a week where someone came up to you and did the worst possible thing to you, where you've experienced brokenness, where you've experienced sickness, where you've experienced pain, and when you come in these doors on a Sunday morning, our response as a church to every single person should be, how can I help you? 
How can I get to you? How can I heal your brokenness through the power of the Holy Spirit? Not, you just need to act better so you can start doing better. Because that's what they do when you go to a country club. I had the privilege of growing up with grandparents who had a country club membership. Which, I mean, those are my kind of people, you know what I mean? Like, I, okay, anyway, I liked it. We'd go to that country club, though. We'd drive over. We'd get out, and they'd valet park the car. And we'd go in. And I remember one time we went, I was, this was for my 10th birthday, and I ordered a hot dog at the country club because I didn't grow up like that. And so... I thought it was my birthday. My favorite food was hot dogs. So I ordered a hot dog at the country club. My grandpa was like, you could get whatever you want. All right, I'll get some fries with that hot dog, man. This is amazing. But there was a culture in that club, not trying to knock anybody. If you go to a country club, that's awesome. Take me with you. But there was a culture in that club, right, when you show up that you had to act a certain way. You, you couldn't show up like this. You couldn't wear jeans and a short sleeve shirt. In fact, in order to go, you had to have a tie buttoned up here, which never works when you, you know, change sizes a lot. So you had to have a lot of money to buy lots of shirts because you had to button it with wear a tie. And then you got to put a jacket on, a dinner jacket, right? And then you sit down and you have your meal and they serve you. And, and, and it's a really cool experience. I hope you all get to experience at some point in your life. But see, the problem becomes if the church looks like that, then all we're going to be is obsessed with ourselves and making sure we measure up to the people around us. But if the church is what Jesus said, where it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick, it might be a little chaotic. You might come in here sometimes and be like, I don't want to catch that, right? I don't want to get what that person has. I don't want to hang out with sinners. That's the church that welcomes sinners. If we don't welcome sinners, who will? And if we don't welcome sinners, then I'm not welcome because I might stand up here and look like I got it together, but ask this little striped jacket lady in the front row, I don't. (laughs) So if we don't welcome sinners, then none of us can be here. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but are justified freely by his grace. And I think sometimes in the church, we leave the butt piece out and we're like, you all have sinned and fallen short, but I'm good. And we bring on our country club mindset instead of realizing this hospital, this church is a hospital. This area down here is what I would call our operating room. I was thinking this week, I was over here praying in this altar, and it's, 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 for some people, it's very natural when Anthony says, come down, or Julian says, come down here. A couple weeks ago, if you were here, Anthony opened this up. I was out of town getting texts from people because you all were packed down here. Of course, the Sunday I'm not there, the altar's packed, but that's another story. And so you, you respond to the Holy Spirit calling you down to this altar, but you don't come down to this altar. Is there's nothing magical down here except for a surrender that says, God, I need some work done, Right? You ever had some work done? I had my gallbladder removed last year. That was horrible. Some people get it removed and go out to dinner afterwards. I was laid up for two weeks just milking that thing, you know? Take care of me. <laughs> milking that thing. And, and <laughs> But I had to go in for that gallbladder surgery because the day that I went in for the emergency surgery, this is not a lie, I was walking up our steps trying to go get ready for church, and I literally hurled over like this. I was in so much pain. And so they took me to the ER first, came to the experience, right? And then they said, we got to take you in and operate to get rid of that gallstone so you can get rid of the pain. And see, I think sometimes we come into church and we come into the ER, but we sit in the waiting room and we actually don't want to go in for surgery because if someone sees me come down here and kneel down and say, God, I need you to break through my life. I need you to heal my relationships. I need you to heal my body. I need you to break through my finances, whatever it is, people might actually watch. But here's the thing. If it was a country club, they would, but we're a hospital. And when you're in the ER and you're broken, you don't care about the other broken people. You're like, fix me. I need fixed. I need healed. I need to be set free. And so this area down here is not an area where we're trying to put on a show. It's not an area where we're like, if we just have people come down and it's just something magical that's going to happen. No, the only thing that happens is the Holy Spirit meets you and begins to work in you. And it may not always happen in an instant. It might take five, six, eight, ten months or years till God gets it carved out in you. But the fact is you're just surrender saying, God, I showed up at the hospital and now I need you to heal me. I need you to heal me. 
The church is a hospital. We've been doing a Bible study and prayer service on Tuesday nights. This whole series, I'm going to just keep casting vision. So I'm talking a lot about our church. Is that okay? A lot about where we're going. Right now, I'm talking a lot about where we are. Tuesday night, Bible study and prayer service. And it's not well attended. Can I be real, right? Right, John? John's always here. Faithful. There's always six or seven people here. And I get calls from people throughout the week that say to me, I just don't feel like I can go deep enough at church. Well, when was the last time you came to a Bible study? When did you plug into a tribe? When did you serve? Well, because here's the thing. You show up at the ER, you're going to get fixed. But you don't just sit in the ER after you're fixed. What happens? You go home. You go back and, and if someone else is hurting, you bring them to the ER. But if you come and just sit in the ER, you're not already healed. If you're already healed in the ER, there's, there's no point of you sitting there anymore. So you got to get in deeper. So that Tuesday night at 7 o'clock is what I would call the, the, the therapy rooms, the patient rooms where you go and you're, you're there and they're working on you and it takes time. And so we go through series. Right now we're in the book of 1 John and we're digging apart. And as we're studying this stuff out, I mean, I can't get usually past two verses a week because there's so much in there and we study it for 30 minutes and then we pray together for 30 minutes and the seven or eight of us that show up each week, God is doing things in our lives. And you're going, I just don't, I don't, I don't, well, you're, you have a country club mindset. Church ain't working for you because you're not working the church. It's more than an emergency room. It's therapy. Yeah. Our tribes is what I'd call an aftercare unit or aftercare, you know, like you go home and then the therapist or the, the physical therapist or someone comes to you, a nurse comes to your house after you had a surgery to check on you. That's your tribes, because you got to continue staying healed once you're healed. So connect into a tribe if you want to stay whole. We're starting a coaching and counseling office this year, and I would say that would be like where you really get down into the deep issues. And sometimes in church, we want to act like we got it all together, and we want to look good, and we want to show up and think everything's good, and not admit that we need help. But if you need help, admit it, and we're going to offer that this year. The church is a hospital and hospitality is love for the other, the separate, and the different. If you're taking notes this morning, a couple things you can write down as we go through here. The first thing about a hospital that you can observe is that a hospital has a, a distinct smell and a distinct sound. A hospital has a distinct smell and a distinct sound. This quote on the screen is from, from uh, Tommy, um, what is his name? Tommy Barnett, I believe. Um, he is the pastor of First Phoenix First Assembly out in Phoenix, Arizona. It's this massive church. This is, you got to get it. This is so cool. This is a massive church that has a huge heart for the poor. And so all they do in their church is just help people over and over. Have you ever heard of the Dream Center? They have a Dream Center in Phoenix and in L.A. and now all over the nation. This pastor has started this to just really take care of their communities around him. And this is what he says. If you can go back a slide there. This is what he says about your church. Can you go back a slide there, Miss Annette? Thank you so much. If you aren't finding cigarette butts, condom wrappers, and beer cans in your church parking lot, then you aren't attracting the right crowd. Next slide, please. God came to seek and save the lost, the hurting, the broken, and the unclean. Whoa. Now, can I just tell you, honestly, we find those things here, so hey, thank you, Jesus, you're here. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to, we ain't, I am preaching this to a church that's not doing that because we got that. But here's what I want us to know. His heart in that is not to say, we want to be a church that just says, come in here and we just want to condone you right where you are and just tell you that you don't have to come to the cross, you don't need Jesus, you're just good and you're a broken mess. No. But what we're saying is this place should be so filled with broken people that run into God's presence each week and say, I got to get to the ER so I can be made whole. And when we leave this place, people should know we've been here. Not physical littering, please, okay, because I'm going to have to clean it up. But I mean the aroma that we leave, because a hospital has a distinct smell and a distinct sound. If you walk into a hospital, I remember my grandfather uh, was, was before he passed away, he had had his leg amputated. And when they were amputating his leg, he had it cut off down here. But then it got infected. 
And that infection lasted so much, he ended up having, I think, seven or eight surgeries where they just kept cutting it up higher and higher and higher. And it was the span of a few months. And we'd go visit my grandpa, and you would get off the elevator, and you'd be like, oh, what is that horrible smell? And it was his infection. And you could smell it down the hallway, walking to his room. You could smell the, the, the smell of infection. Our church should have a distinct smell in our community. And that smell doesn't have to be roses. That smell can be, oh, that's that church where they let anybody come. That's that church where everyone is welcome. That's that church where, where they just love people. That's that church where they're always meeting needs and they're always trying to do, help people. That's the church that, 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 that those people go to. We're those people. And we should be those people. Because here's the problem. If we aren't those people, then where can those people go to? Because when those people try to show up at a place that doesn't welcome those people, they can't get connected to God because how in the world can they get connected if no one will love them into the kingdom of God? And so when people show up here, yeah, we smell funny and we look different and we don't all talk the same and we don't all act the same and we don't all make the same. That's the beauty of the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hang out with people who are like me all the time. I want to hang out with people, especially once I've been changed, who I can go and love on and be with and say, God loves you. God's got a plan for you. God wants to use your life. And that has a stink to a lot of other Christians. Can I be real? Oh. It's crazy. Oh, you're that church. I, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Because if we're not, this, I get told this by people, this isn't just being real. Can I be real? I, I don't know why I ask that. I'm always real. I get told by people all the time in churches that are dying, oh, you're that church. I'm like, uh-huh, and how, I'm not trying to you know, brag, but how many people are you affecting in your community? Yeah. You're, you're sitting here in the meeting telling me your church is dying, but you won't do anything to impact the world around you because they don't look like you and talk like you and smell like you, and then you don't know why your church is dying. It's dying because it's not the church. It's a country club, and the church needs to be a hospital, and hospitals are noisy and smell funny, and it's chaotic everywhere, and that's the whole point because it's filled with broken people who are trying to get healed. That's a hospital. Second thing you can write down is that a hospital works best when the staff works in their strengths. If you know Jesus in here today, you are the staff. You're like, but I'm not on staff at the church. It doesn't matter. You're on staff at the kingdom. In fact, if you're trying to say in your life, look, I don't really have much to do. Here's the thing. You're sitting next to somebody that's working on their third PhD, and they're like, well, I'm on my third PhD. And you're like, shoot, I just tried to get my GED. I thought I was doing good, you know? <laughs> Here's what you say to them. You don't have to tell them about the GED. That doesn't matter. You say, look, actually, I work for the largest organization on the planet because the church is still the largest organization on the planet. We actually carry the book that is the best-sold book in history still to this day for the organization I work for. And in my instruction manual, you keep studying your, your stuff. In my instruction manual, Jesus told me to go into all the world and preach the gospel until he comes again, which means that my job for the rest of my life until he comes or until I die is to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And I don't know about you, but if you look far, there's a whole lot of more of the ends of the earth to go to. So your resume can be long, 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 long. You don't have to be intimidated by what you don't have. Take on the mission statement of Jesus, which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel and use that and then look back at them and say, so what do you do? <laughs> Don't be inferior. You can push a vacuum cleaner and build the kingdom of God. Yeah. A hospital works best when people use their strengths. And here's what happens in churches, all right? Everyone wants to be on the worship team. I don't know why, but everyone wants to be on the worship team. Everyone wants a microphone because if you got a microphone, you feel like you got power. No, if you got a microphone, you got a lot of accountability. Yeah. James, James chapter 3 says, Not many of you should presume to be teachers because you who teach will be judged more strictly. Ouch! So you all can just sit there. You don't get judged as much as I do. But we want, we want, the, we want the glory, whatever that is, right? 
It's not as prestigious as you think. Trust me, just follow me for a week. But, but we, want, we want the platform. But here's the thing. When you go into a hospital, the CEO of the hospital does not typically stitch someone's wound. The kitchen staff is not usually the one hooking up IVs. How would you feel if you go in and they were like, okay, we're going to put you on IVs and chef's going to come on in here and <laughs> hook you up? Like, you'd be like, excuse me? And I don't know about you, but if you follow the doctors around the hospital, the doctors are not the people who take notes. You ever tried to read your prescription? I'm just saying, right? Even, the, even some of the nurses. My wife's got good handwriting. She's great. But you know, like, they're not the, the people who transcribe. Why? Because it's not their strength. And what we do in the kingdom of God sometimes is we say, I want that strength. I want that job. No, guys, we're all part of the same team. We're all in the same job. We don't need to all be people on the platform or all people in the cafe or all people leading things. You can be someone who pushes the vacuum cleaner and the way in which you do it brings glory to God and builds the church and loves people and your strengths are fielding in to the greater strength which is building God's kingdom. But it's only gonna work if we all use our strengths and do 